I am confessing to you all right now that I, Tamiria Jordan, can't fight because I feel like I've been in a fight for my life. Meaning, the enemy knows the potential that I have. The enemy knows the potential that you have. So one of the things that he does when he knows the potential that one has, he fights you. He uses anyone in any situation to get you off course. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the CC America podcast, a show dedicated to helping others get mentally fit through testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation. We hope you enjoy the show. Thank you for tuning in to another live episode of the CC America podcast. I am your host, Tamiria Jordan. And tonight I am coming to you live with a special episode to piggyback on episode 48, which was titled Rejection Was a Blessing. So I mentioned that episode would have more to it, but I will say that what was revealed to me in the middle of the night, and I had started thinking about it yesterday, but I wasn't quite sure what I was going to title this show, but it came to me around 6.20 a.m. I can't fight. And most of you are probably wondering, what does she mean by that? So we will get into it. But if this is your first time tuning in to the CC America podcast, CC America stands for Confidence Centers of America. And this is a show dedicated to helping you get mentally fit through stories of faith, inspiration, and transformation. So today, you can consider this a confessional because I am confessing to you all right now that I, Tamiria Jordan, can't fight. So what do I mean by that, that I can't fight? Well, when you look up the definition of fight, it's been defined by Oxford Dictionary as to quarrel or argue, to struggle to put out, and endeavor vigorously to win, to struggle or campaign against, attempt to repress a feeling or an expression of a feeling, to move forward with difficulty, especially by pushing through a crowd or overcoming physical obstacles, engage in a war or battle, or take part in a violent struggle involving the exchange of physical blows. Now, I'm not talking about physical blows in this sense. What I'm talking about is being able to fight spiritually. I have been, I would say, going through an interesting season, and that's how I will title it, where I feel like God is really trying to get my attention because I feel like I've been in a fight for my life, meaning the enemy knows the potential that I have. The enemy knows the potential that you have. So one of the things that he does when he knows the potential that one has, he fights you. He uses anyone in any situation to get you off course, to have you engaged in a battle, in an ongoing war that never seems to end. And that battle can be in your mind. That battle can be with people that you are in relationship with. That battle can be, you know, on the job, wherever that battle is. But I'm learning that a lot of times we may be looking at it the wrong way. And Ironically, I realized that I've been looking at it the wrong way and I oftentimes find myself in a power struggle. And what I mean by that is I am trying my hardest to make people understand where I'm coming from, especially if I don't believe that they understand my intent with regard to something I say or something I do. And oftentimes I have been offended by the actions of others and I feel the need to defend myself. And I heard a message, I can't remember who it was now, but they said that their father told them to live on the offense. Actually, it was a sermon I heard. Um, A pastor was visiting a church locally and he said that his father taught him in sports to be on the offense because if you're on the offense, You are always ready, um, regardless of what may come your way. And when he said that, something triggered in my spirit where I said, oh my gosh, I'm always on the defense because I feel like, you know, people are attacking me for no reason or there are situations that come up that make me question if in fact I'm under attack based on things that are said or things that are done. 
And oftentimes I would say, trust your gut for sure, because usually if you feel like something isn't right, it probably isn't. But why do we necessarily feel the need to continue to fight those battles? And the reason I say that is we may be fighting a battle, but it's a losing battle because we may be going about it the wrong way. So the reality for me is I'm realizing through life situations that I've been fighting my battles the wrong way because the word says in Ephesians 6 verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, verse 13, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And when I think about that, when I think about the different situations I've been in, Yes, I might have a right to feel how I feel. I may have a right to be upset in the moment. I may have a right to confront the issue head on and share my perspective. But oftentimes you'll find that it's a losing battle unless both parties are willing to be a participant in reconciling or figuring out, you know, how to move forward from wherever you happen to be. And Ironically, one of the things that I I posted um, as part of the advertisement for the last show, Rejection Was a Blessing, was a post where there was a quote by James Baldwin, which said, I can't believe what you say because I see what you do. And oftentimes when we struggle and we're in a battle or a fight, it's because there is something that's been done. And we may disagree with it, or it could be something that's been said, but we are literally trying to struggle to get our point across, struggling to be heard. And when I got that realization, I sat with the thought this morning, um, really early. And then ironically, around my lunch break, I had turned on Joyce Myers. And ironically, (laughs) And I say ironically, but I know it's not by chance that this is the message I heard. The topic was How to Win Your Battles, Part 1 by Joyce Myers. And she mentioned how we can feel what we feel, but we don't have to let it run our life. We don't have to allow our emotions to get the best of us. We don't have to allow that constant feeling to defend or to fight back when we've been wrongfully accused or we've been mistreated. We don't have to continue to fight back because God says vengeance is mine. But I say, I don't know how to fight because for the first 37 years of my life, I've been fighting all wrong. When someone says something negative about me, I feel the need to refute what they say. If someone tells a lie, I feel the need to prove my truth. And if you did listen to the last episode, you may recall a a situation that I shared about being in the workplace where one of my colleagues, she was my manager at the time, she um, was, was being very dishonest. And I felt the need to go and show my proof because I could prove what she was saying was not true. Yet and still, it didn't matter what I had to say because the people that were listening wanted to take her side regardless of what the truth revealed. And I thought back to that situation this morning when I woke up and I I thought to myself, you can't fight. And it really is true. I can't because I'm noticing that it doesn't matter. If someone wants to believe a lie, that's what they're going to believe. You can talk until you are blue in the face and it will never change their perspective. And so It's one of those things that can keep us distracted from our purpose. And I realize a lot of times in my life, I've spent time and wasted time engaging in arguments that I'll never win. Um, Meaning the enemy knows if he can distract me, I won't fulfill my purpose. I'll be so distracted arguing or fighting and trying to prove my truth that I won't have time to focus on the things that are really important. And so I felt like, you know, now is a time for me to just be transparent and be open because I don't know who needs to hear this message, but whoever is supposed to hear it will hear it. I want you to consider how you've been fighting your battles. Have you been 
coming with the receipts, uh, so to speak. And I mentioned the receipts because on Instagram the other day, I actually saw a video, a clip um, of Lisa Ray. She's an actress. Um, she was on the Wendy Williams show and she was talking about a woman who was uh, supposedly involved in an extramarital affair with her husband at the time. Um, and she mentioned that she had a conversation with this woman before she found out about the affair. And then that woman went on the Wendy Williams show and said that she lied about something. And she said, you know, we all have skeletons in our closet, but she should have pled the fifth because pleading the fifth would have meant she wouldn't have said anything. Whereas in her case, she called Lisa Ray a liar and she said, don't make me do it. Don't make me pull out my receipts. And so... I thought about receipts and proof and things of that nature, and I wrote a post um, this past weekend that said, dishonest people dislike proof. They'd rather call you a liar, assassinate your character, or comment on your ability to corroborate your side of the story rather than choose the path of honesty. This is the sad reality of the times. Keep being a good person and know that the truth will set you free. The word does tell us that the truth will set you free, but it doesn't make it any easier when you're going through situations and individuals make it difficult for you because they may know the truth, but they don't want other people to know the truth. And once you start coming with your proof, it can either help the situation or it can hinder the situation because most people don't want to be called out or they don't want to be embarrassed by the truth. And all of us, if we think about it, have things that we're probably not proud of. I know that I have things that I'm not proud of, but I'm realizing that it is a losing battle. So the caption that I put under that quote was, set yourself free from rejection from those who weren't for you anyway. Guilt for choosing you. Worry about what they think. Instead, set yourself up for new beginnings, peace, freedom, joy. And I wrote... Remember, a hit dog will holler. That was a colloquialism and and phrase you heard a lot of times, especially growing up. Um, But it's true. If you strike a nerve typically with someone or if they've done the things that you've said, then it's easy for them to be on the defense as well. Or on the flip side, if you have a different recollection of events, You're going to be going back and forth with someone who has their own perspective. And I'm realizing that sometimes we go back and forth with people who don't want to have another perspective. Even if they do something wrong to you, they will be more mad at your response than they are at their actions. And that's a hard pill to swallow, especially in this day and time when we think about the things that we witnessed, even with the last presidency. Literally, there were video videos of proof tape recordings, all types of evidence to prove certain things. And yet, and still the prior president, Donald Trump still denied it, even with the proof. And so when I think about that, I think about my life, I think about the fruitless discussions uh, that I've had, you know, with people or in situations about things that in the grand scheme of things, if I were to die today or tomorrow, or if they were to die today or tomorrow, would it really matter? The one thing I'll say that matters is you are able to choose how you proceed and how you handle disagreements, how you handle those situations. And I'm realizing that I can't fight anymore, meaning I don't have it in me. I don't want to fight. I don't want to go back and forth with people to prove the truth when I know the truth because it's a waste of my time. And quite frankly, it's a waste of theirs as well because they know what they did. And so I am learning that I need to allow people to just be who they are. And if they choose to be dishonest, that is on them. That is not on me. So when I heard that message about fighting your battles and Joyce Myers was talking about, you know, who is the enemy using to get to you? It could be anyone. It could be people who are really close to you. It could be people that you don't even know, a stranger in a store that says something that rubs you the wrong way or that does something that impacts you. But at the end of the day, you have to think about the real battle that we're fighting. And again, in Ephesians, it tells us that we are warring against spirits. And I love how in that message today, she talked about how the enemy 
His goal from the time you are born is to kill, steal, and destroy you. He wants to kill your dreams. He wants to kill your potential. He wants to stop your purpose. He wants to steal from you the joy that you have, the peace, the happiness. He wants to destroy anything positive because he has no authority. And I love how she said that as well, Joyce Meyer. She said he has power, but no authority. And it's true. When we engage in battle, when we engage in fighting unnecessarily and not physical struggle, but when we engage in the banter back and forth with someone um, trying to get our point across when it's clear that they don't want to hear it, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of your time. It's a waste of their time. And I'm personally to a point now where I'm realizing that oftentimes the individual that I think I'm having the battle with is not the person that I'm truly battling with. It could be something on the inside of me that's been triggered by an action that they took. But ultimately, it is a spiritual battle. It is a battle between spirits, between things that may or may not align. And I know a lot of people may not like to talk about spirits, but the spiritual world is real. And I do believe oftentimes we are battling battling things that we may not see. And on top of that, When we engage in those arguments, when we engage in being upset and being frustrated, we give the enemy a foothold to take over. And I've decided I don't want to live my life bitter, angry, resentful, or mad at anyone for anything that they've done. Because at the end of the day, they have a choice the same way I have a choice. My choice is to be a good person, to do right by people to not mistreat them, to not lie to them, to do things to others that I would want done to me and also not to do things to others that I would not want done to me. So knowing that the enemy will use any and everyone to try to get you off track, to throw you off of your game, it doesn't mean that you can't hold people accountable for their actions. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is recognizing in the moment who you are really up against. Are you battling a spiritual um, entity that is using whomever it is to get to you, to speak a negative word over your life, to discourage you in pursuing your dreams, to keep you from being happy, to make you question your character? Think about those things. Think about, you know, what is it that I'm supposed to learn in this lesson? And if I've gone around this mountain a time or two, why? Why am I still going around this mountain? Why am I still fighting this battle? And for me, like I said, for 37 years, there's some battles I've been fighting for a while. I've been battling the need to be right. I've been battling the need to to speak my peace, but sometimes it's not even necessary Because at the end of the day, people will hear what they want to hear and they will do what they want to do. And I often found that it was beneficial. And the funny thing is I wasn't keeping documentation or proof or anything other than the fact that if it was a situation that happened, if we had a conversation, if you come back and tell me that's not what you said and it's in writing, well, that's proof. So it's so interesting because people will say, you know, that you're using that against them when the truth is that's not it at all. The truth is, if that's what you said and now you're saying something different, why can't we go back and revisit the conversation so that we can get clarity and move forward? But oftentimes it leads to a battle, a fight, a power struggle of who's right and who's wrong. And so I'm realizing that it's unnecessary It really is. And I've spent a good part of my life, and that's why I said a confessional, trying to defend myself. And like the pastor on Sunday said, I want to live on the offense. I want to live in a place where I have on the full armor of God, where I am ready and prepared before I go into battle because I don't know what I may face in any given time or at any given situation on any given day. But if I'm prepared, I go into that day different with a different attitude, with a different air about myself. Like, you know what? 
No matter what comes my way, I'm ready. No matter who's trying to get me down, who's trying to crush my spirit, who's saying this or saying that about me, it won't matter. And I encourage you too to think about that and and wonder, you know, what is it that's causing you to respond in the way that you respond? I know for myself, there were times when I was younger where I felt like I wasn't heard and people could do or say whatever they wanted to say to me. But when I tried to speak up for myself and share my perspective, I was silenced. And so now as an adult, I want, I fight to have that communication, but I'm fighting all wrong. I'm fighting to be heard. But here's the thing. In order to be heard, there has to be someone who really truly wants to listen, who wants to hear what you're really saying, who wants to comprehend what's being said between the lines, but also what's actually being said. And when you think about communication, there's encoding and decoding. You have a sender and you have the person who's receiving the message. And in that exchange, things can get confused. So we still should definitely have conversations. We should speak about the things that bother us. We should be able to speak up and not feel bad about that. But it's a it's a matter of how we do it and what our true intent is. And like I said, I know for me, I don't want to fight. I don't. I can't fight. I don't have it in me anymore. I am tired. I am tired of fighting to be heard. So... I will speak with conviction and whoever hears it, hears it. And whoever doesn't, as the word said, I will shake the dust off my feet and keep going because not everyone will hear you regardless of what you say, regardless if you're speaking in truth because they don't want to, but guess what? That's not your business and it's darn sure not mine. And I've made it my business for far too long and I've allowed the enemy to disrupt my peace to disrupt my happiness, to steal my joy, to keep me from pursuing my dreams, to keep me from doing things that I am passionate about because I'm wasting time in fruitless discussion or battles, frankly, that there will never be (laughs) an end for because everyone has their own opinions. Everyone is entitled and has a right to have their own opinion. And in 2 Timothy 1, it says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So if we have fear, again, that's another battle. That's a battle against the truth of what we know. That God has given us dominion over this earth and the things in this earth. But we give our power away. And the enemy knows that. That's why he whispers those things to you. But God said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. You don't have to be afraid to fight in this battle because I've got your back. Where we struggle and the fear comes in is because we think we have to do it alone. And he also said, we have power. We have love and a sound mind. But only if we want to accept that and walk in the strength that he's given us. If we want to have the faith to keep pressing forward and the faith to believe that what's done in the dark will come to light and that you don't have to continue to fight those battles. And then again, why are we fighting them? What is it that we have to prove and why do we feel we need to prove anything to anyone? But I've spent a lot of my life trying to prove things And I'm realizing that it is a waste of time. I have wasted a lot of time in my life trying to prove things to people who don't want to hear it. And guess what? That is their right. They don't have to. And in Galatians 6, it reminds us, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let me tell you, the enemy is trying to make you faint. (laughs) I know he's been trying to make me faint. And so when I think about fighting and you think about wrestlers being in a corner, 
That's exactly what they're doing. They're trying not to faint. They're getting their water. Their team is there to make sure that they can go back into the battle and not, you know, fall out or get knocked out. They need a little bit of water to keep going. They need to get pumped up again because wrestling means to take part in a fight, either as sport or in earnest that involves grappling with one's opponent and trying to throw or force them to the ground or struggling with a difficulty or problem. Many of us may be struggling with a difficulty or problem and the problem is we're struggling with it. Meaning we haven't asked God what he wants us to learn from that situation. What's he, what he wants to do in that situation. We just keep on fighting. We keep fighting and it feels like you're pushing up against a a brick wall. You know how I know? I told you this is a confessional because I do it. (laughs) I feel the need to, to keep pushing. I engage in the struggle, but another thing that he reminds us, okay. And Luke 10, it says Luke 10 and verse 19, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So the enemy is there, but he has no power. God has given us power to tread on serpents, to tread on scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy. Yet we give our power away when we continue to try to fight him in our physical sense. Like we're trying to do things again to prove why we're right, to justify why we did X, Y, and Z instead of claiming the dominion that we have. And letting things work themselves out the way that they're going to work themselves out. So I am declaring on this day that I can't fight, but I don't want to because greater is in me than he that's in the world. And so the next time I go into battle, I hope I will remember to put on the right armor so that I can fight any battles that I face in this life the right way. And I don't know if you all remember, but when I first rolled out this podcast, Psalm 91 was one of the Psalms that I shared. That was actually one of the Psalms that was on, actually that was the Psalm that was on the podium of the church, um, in 1993, when I was involved in an F4 tornado. And I shared more about that on a past episode, but Psalm 91 is really powerful because it tells us the power that we have. Starting in ver- on verse one, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. But thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thy shall bear thee up thy hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. And remember when we talked earlier about fighting and trouble? It's a struggle. It's a difficulty. But you just heard, he said he would be with us in times of trouble. So when the fights come, when the battles come, when they're raging against you and you don't understand why 
you are in this particular struggle, in this particular moment. That's when you have to decide how you want to fight that battle. Do you want to fight it the way you've always fought it? Or do you want to fight it a little bit differently this time and go to God and let him handle it? Let him handle it. He sees what's done in the dark. There's no need for us to go and and try to get vengeance. Because oftentimes you might end up making a decision that you regret. When he says he's going to take all of it, like he will take care of all of it. Romans 12, 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. How many of us are out here trying to repay because of what someone did or what someone said? And also in Romans 12, verse 20, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And that is the main premise of this message regarding fighting. You do not have to trade poison for poison. You don't have to keep engaging in a battle that was not yours to begin with. The only thing that you need to do is keep being a good person. And trust me, I'm talking to myself right now. The only thing I need to do is be a good person. To treat people right. To make decisions that don't impact others in a negative way. To be intentional about my decisions. But one thing I also need to do and that I've had to repent for is I need to be intentional about my words. Like I said earlier, I can fight, but I'm usually fighting the wrong way. I'm fighting with my words. I'm fighting with my proof. I'm fighting with all these things because I want to show Wait, that's not my intent. You misunderstood me. This is really how I feel. This is really what I did. Here's the proof. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Because then I have to question my motives. Why do I feel the need to prove? So on this day, I'm admitting to you that I can't fight. But it's a new day and a new opportunity for me to learn how to fight. For me to learn how to fight God's way. For me to stop trying to fight my way. So for whoever was supposed to hear this message, I pray that it blesses you. And the affirmation that I'm going to say, I'm going to repeat, is that I am going to fight God's way. God can handle my battles better than I can. I will walk in love, I will stay in peace, and I will maintain my joy. So on that good note, good people, thank you for tuning in. Please feel free to share this message if it helped you or if you think it could help someone else. And thank you for the ongoing support of this show. We couldn't do it without you. Keep on keeping on. Be strong and know that the enemy cannot take anything that you don't give him. Be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the CC America podcast. We appreciate you tuning in week after week and joining us for stories of faith, inspiration, and transformation. So that you never miss an update, please subscribe at www.ccamericapodcast.com. You can also follow us on all of our social media platforms at CC America LLC. You can also just search for CC America on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. We hope that you are encouraged and inspired by this show. If so, please don't hesitate to share the episodes or let people know that you are listening so that they too can be inspired. We appreciate your support and until next time, be blessed.